everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be discussing the different ways in which organisms obtain two essential things. Those are carbon and energy. We know that life is carbon based and life needs energy in order to grow and develop and so that's why the sources of carbon and energy are great ways to categorize organisms. So we have organisms that are categorized in the different ways in which they obtain these two things, carbon and energy. Let's talk first about different carbon sources. Organisms that obtain their carbon from various organic sources in their environment are called heterotrophs. The other way in which some organisms can obtain carbon is through environmental carbon dioxide. That is, carbon dioxide contains carbon and some organisms can take it up and harvest it for use in other ways. These organisms are called autotrophs. Organisms can also be categorized based on their energy sources. For example, those organisms that get their energy from the sunlight are called phototrophs. And of course, there are many organisms that can't just directly generate energy for their own use from sunlight, and those organisms instead oxidize various inorganic chemicals to obtain their energy, and these are called chemotrophs. Now, of course, all organisms need both of these things. All organisms need carbon, and all organisms need energy. And this means that these categories can be combined to create four different types of organisms. Photoautotrophs, photoheterotrophs, chemoautotrophs, and chemoheterotrophs. Let's talk about some examples of each one of these. Photoautotrophs are those organisms that are getting their energy from the sunlight and their carbon from environmental carbon dioxide. So these include organisms like plants, also algae, as well as cyanobacteria, which is a type of bacteria you may have heard of. Photoheterotrophs are still getting their energy from sunlight, but rather than using the environmental carbon dioxide, they're getting their carbon from organic sources. These include a couple of types of bacteria that most people haven't heard of called purple, and green non-sulfur bacteria. Chemoautotrophs, the next type of category, includes organisms that get their energy from inorganic chemicals and their carbon from environmental carbon dioxide. Chemoautotrophs include a lot of the organisms that we think of as extremophiles. This refers to things like halophiles, salt-loving bacteria, methanogens, the bacteria and archaea that live in deep sea ocean vents. These are all types of extremophiles that are falling into the category of chemoautotrophs. Now finally, that fourth category is chemoheterotrophs. So these are organisms that are getting their energy from inorganic chemicals that are metabolized in some way to extract the energy, and they're getting their carbon from organic sources. So organic sources, perhaps things that they eat or take up in some way in order to harvest the carbon from them. The best examples of chemoheterotrophs, and the ones that we're all familiar with, are members of the animal kingdom. 
including humans. So that is it for today, learning about the carbon and energy sources of various organisms. I hope you learned a lot and thanks for watching Biology Professor.